Inside Africa, in association with Zenith Bank. Nairobi, one of the world's fastest growing cities, a modern metropolis surrounded by savannah. It is home to one of the world's most widely renowned animal sanctuaries and the place where the iconic mama elephant, Dame Daphne Sheldrick, both lived and gave life. There's a lot of heartache involved in rearing the elephants, but also a lot of joy. Gives one a wonderful feeling. One really knows that one has made a difference. Daphne, quite frankly, achieved what nobody has been able to achieve. This is the legacy and the family she leaves behind. This is Inside Africa. where I have spent my life working with the many creatures of this beautiful land. My life has had its ups and downs like everyone else's, but throughout my family have stood by me. So too have the many people who have come together in the struggle to save and nurture this country's great wilderness. Speaking in this 2013 video about her work, it's clear Dame Daphne Sheldrick dedicated her life to fighting for Kenya's wildlife. But on April 12, 2018, Dame Daphne Sheldrick's three-year battle with breast cancer came to an end. And while she leaves behind a loving family, cherished colleagues, and countless rescued animals, it's through her first of its kind, world-renowned wildlife trust that she will always be remembered. There actually hasn't been a period of uh, sort of mourning or stopping I'm not quite sure if that's a good or bad thing. Um, we've been incredibly busy. You know, the show goes on. I mean, there's 29 little elephants outside our back door here that, you know, their routines need to continue. We have 420 staff members throughout all our projects throughout the country. So it's a, it's a mammoth job. Elephant keeper Edwin Lucigi has worked with the trust for over 20 years. I've met Dr. Dame Daphne Sheldrick uh, the second day of being here. I was a bit nervous because having started this big project, it is big. Uh, for me, I thought she's not somebody that anyone can meet. But I met her, she was so friendly, social, down to earth, and welcoming. Throughout her years building the David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust, Daphne Sheldrick rescued and rehabilitated over 230 baby elephants, orphaned due to poaching, drought, or human-wildlife conflict. She became an international expert in animal husbandry and the first person in the world to successfully raise newborn elephant orphans. In the beginning, she told me that elephants are human beings. And so while working with them, you need to know that you're working with human beings that are much more smarter than you are. Born in 1934 on a highland farm, some 120 kilometers from Nairobi, Daphne was educated in the capital at the Kenya High School for Girls, matriculating in 1950. Daphne got a scholarship to go and become a doctor, but all she wanted to do was marry Bill Woodley at the time and uh, nothing was going to stop her. Bill Woodley was posted to Savo as the assistant warden to David Sheldrick. David Sheldrick was the founding warden of Tsavo National Park in southern Kenya. Daphne would eventually leave Woodley and marry David. Together, throughout the 1950s, they would carve out 22,000 square kilometers of park from a virgin wilderness, establishing what is still today Kenya's largest protected area. David was 15 years older than me. 
He taught me all I know about wildlife, for he was an encyclopedia of life. He knew so much about elephants long before any elephant studies were ever undertaken, and taught me about these magnificent creatures, instilling a lifelong passion that I never knew would become so acute. I have treasure troves of slides that my dad took. I mean, look at this one. Look at her taking a afternoon sleep with a little bit, bit on her bed. I've got so many, but you see, there I am. So many people think a life in Africa is about sort of khaki. And Daphne was always about beautiful, glamorous dresses. And yeah, in the mud bath with a baby elephant. In 1977, David Sheldrick passed away at just 57 years old leaving Daphne with her daughters, Jill and Angela. When David died, I thought I'd just have a quiet life and maybe write a few books and children's books mainly and do what I could for the animals that I came across. And, you know, just, I didn't really know what I was going to do, but it, it, it just happened upon me. I mean, you know, the, the orphans started coming in, the elephants started coming in. I think if David were alive today, he would be incredibly proud of what Daphne, his wife, has, has achieved. Because in his lifetime, Daphne was a satellite to his life. I mean, uh, she played a, a wonderfully supportive role, but she was, she was actually a very shy and meek and mild lady. In the wake of his death, she, she has emerged this giant in, in terms of pursuing his dreams and visions and um, making so much of his visions for the future a reality. She was a very, very strong lady, not just physically, but mentally. And uh, one thing about Daphne, right till the very end, she was very defiant. I remember when, you know, when I had to tell her that, you know, the cancer had spread and uh, the prognosis was poor. And she just looked me in the eyes and she said, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> And uh, right till the end, she was very concerned about leaving us. But she was confident in the fact that, um, you know, there's a remarkable team and uh, her work would continue. As a conservationist, she's done a lot to this country to ensure that the animals are safe. She spread this knowledge on conservation. She saved more animals, not only elephants. We've saved rhinos, we've saved impalas, white hogs. Ahead, how Daphne's memory lives on through the people and projects she's inspired. Thinking of banking in Africa, think Zenith. In today's fast-moving, fast-changing world, you need a financial partner that understands your unique expectations. A bank with presence in major financial centers across the world, with the enabling platform to facilitate seamlessly, whenever, wherever, however. A bank with best-in-class financial solutions from a superb combination of technology and human touch for easy, fast, and secure banking that creates real value. Turning dreams into reality is now in your hands. People, technology, service. Zenith Bank, in your best interest. In Grand Prix sailing, monohulls are back in the spotlight. And sitting at the top of that tree is the 52 Super Series, featuring some of the fastest racing yachts and most decorated sailors in the world. This month on Mainsail, we're in Cascais, Portugal, for the third round of the series, the Rolex TP52 World Championships. We've come to see just what it takes to win the world's leading monohull yacht racing circuit. Mainsail, Saturday on CNN, in partnership with Rolex. Today, 
Kenya stands at a crossroads. It has a population that has burgeoned from 8 million at my birth to some 40 million now. This has inevitably brought a rise in conflict between wildlife and humankind. It is essential for the human spirit and the well-being of the earth itself that every effort is made to protect and preserve its wildlife for all our descendants. Known affectionately as Mama Elephant, in Kenya and around the world, the late Dame Daphne Sheldrick continues to inspire both her human and elephant families to carry on her lifelong work here at Nairobi's David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust. I hear her voice and, you know, step up, get up and, and you know, deal with the job. So that's, that's what we all have to do. It's 9 a.m. And the 93 orphaned elephants currently living here at the sanctuary have already had two bottle feedings. I just want to prepare some milk for the elephants. We feed the elephants every three hours day and night. Some cold water, not cold, not too hot. Uh, one elephant takes a total of uh, 24 liters of milk in a day, five pints every three hours, five pints every three hours. In the world, a young baby elephant needs to suckle from the mother for the first two years minimum. Then that's why we rescue those that are two years and below. Because if they are at that age and they don't have a mother, they cannot survive. The groundbreaking work done here to rescue and rehabilitate baby elephants has been mimicked throughout the world. This is human baby formula. Uh, we've added in some uh, coconut cream vitamin C, some salt, and we add in some porridge, which is made from oats meal. It took uh, Dr. Dem Daphne Sheldrick about 28 years to discover that this is the right formula for the baby elephants. And before that, she used the try and error method and lost most of the first orphans. But once she pioneered this formula, most orphans have survived and gone back into the world, and that's why it is believed to be close to the real mother's milk. So, ready to go. Doton, 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 doton. Come on, Dotto. At the moment, we have 93 elephants dependent on us. That's dependent on keepers and milk. So um, that's a lot of milk. <laughs> it's a lot of milk mixing. And so it's a, it's a, you know, the orphans project alone is, is huge. And then of course there's everything else. For a taller elephant like this, you have to be strong because the elephant will want to grab the bottle with their trunk. Some elephants will want to hold the bottle all by themselves. Some will want you to help hold. And that's why you just have to be strong and ready. If it's a tiny, tiny baby elephants, you hold the bottle very close to you because the elephants want to touch on you. Okay, do you want to try holding this by yourself? Okay, do it. In addition to saving over 230 baby elephants, the David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust works to reintegrate these orphans back into the wild. Rescued elephants eventually grow up to raise wild-born babies of their own. This return to the natural life cycle is central to the Trust's ultimate goal, rebuilding Kenya's elephant population. Raising elephants is a small part of what we do because without taking care of the bigger picture would be, would be futile. So, you know, we need to know that when these elephants go back into the wild, we certainly have the resources in place together with, in partnership with the Kenyan Wildlife Service to make sure that they're protected for the future, not just our orphans, but their wild friends. And that's why we have 11 anti-poaching teams and five veterinary units, an aerial wing that flies over Savo and other protected areas to ensure no illegal activities are taking place. And if they are, we're able to sort of respond swiftly together with our partners, the Kenya Wildlife Service. So it's a big operation. Angela's father, David Sheldrick, worked for the Kenya Wildlife Service as founding warden of Tsavo National Park in the 1940s. The close relationship between the Sheldricks and Kenya Wildlife Service has only grown since then, with the establishment of their wildlife trust within Nairobi National Park in 1977. Today, this collaborative work continues, 
with people and projects protecting wild animals across Kenya. I come from western part of Kenya where we don't have elephants and I had never seen an elephant before. But I used to visit this place after my school when I was in college to see the elephants. Then I said, yes, I'm idle, I finished college, I don't have a job, I can stand in for some hours. But it only turned to be a full-time job, 20 years since then now. You know, there's all these incredible seeds that have been planted through generations and generations that we're, you know, I'm, I'm learning about them now, you know, in the wake of my mother's death, these people are reaching out to me how, how their lives have been changed by Daphne and her work. Yeah, just by being exposed to it. And that outreach is an ongoing initiative for the Sheldrick Trust. That's why we go to the schools to educate the children. They need to know why the animals are important. And that is why they do come here as well, the little ones, to see and learn more about conservation and wildlife. It's only these children that will um, actually make or break the future of the animals because the people who are taking care of them now will not be there forever. Daphne's Kenya has changed dramatically over the years. It's the 11th hour now. We really have to ensure that what we have left is, is saved for future generations. Thinking of banking in Africa, think Zenith. In today's fast-moving, fast-changing world, you need a financial partner that understands your unique expectations. A bank with presence in major financial centers across the world, with the enabling platform to facilitate seamlessly, whenever, wherever, however. A bank with best-in-class financial solutions from a superb combination of technology and human touch for easy, fast, and secure banking that creates real value. Turning dreams into reality is now in your hands. People, technology, service. Zenith Bank, in your best interest. It may feel far away from anything and anyone. It's so beautiful and quiet, you almost don't even want to speak above a whisper. But this place and what lives here could be vital to buffering climate change. In a month-long expedition, Arwa Damon explores the beauty, the benefits, and the battle that's brewing. Expedition Antarctic, Saturday on CNN. There's a lot of heartache involved in rearing the elephants, but also a lot of joy. Many of our ex-orphans now are grown up with the wild herds, having wild-born babies and bringing them back to show their keepers. So when that happens, it gives one a wonderful feeling. One really knows that one has made a difference. The legacy of Daphne Sheldrick, Kenya's grand dam of wildlife conservation, lives on through the countless projects and fellow citizens she's inspired. It's all a question of education, isn't it? And in this day and age with the internet, uh, with wonderful films, with wildlife documentaries, with access to reading and writing, you know, there's really no excuse for, not to, for information not to be disseminated far and wide. I don't really think there's a baby elephant raised anywhere in the world without some collaborative arrangement with Daphne's early pioneering work. Founded in 2016, Retedi Elephant Sanctuary Community United for Elephants, or Rescue, is the first community-owned reserve for orphaned elephants in Kenya. My name is Naomi Leshongoro. Uh, I work here for two years now. Yeah, I'm elephant keeper. My favorite elephant is Nado Sweet. Yeah, because she's a playful girl. When you give the bottle, you just call her name. You just 
call that you are good girl, good girl, thank you. You also play with the elephant. Retedi is located in remote northern Kenya, surrounded by the second largest elephant population in the country. Here, rescuing and rehabilitating orphans is a community affair. These elephants are orphans and I have to help them because I really feel the love I feel to my children. My sweet girl! Pala, pala. A mother can show the love that you can show to your children. You can see the mom is just know how to make the baby happy, you know? You sing for your baby, you just make lullabies. Yeah, you just play with your baby. Yeah, this is another side. He's now one year old. He's my favorite. What a man can do, a woman can do better. Until recently, the Samburu community had neither the resources nor the infrastructure necessary to carry out the difficult work of raising orphaned baby elephants locally. My name is Robert Lemayan. I am a guide at Sarara, and guiding means teaching people about my culture and showing them the wildlife. And we've seen that quite a lot of times our baby elephants, when we rescue them from the wells, the singing wells at Sarara, we send them far away from here, like in Nairobi. But now we can have them here so that when we rescue them, we bring them into here, we give them some help, and then when we release them, we release them back into their natural habitat and into a place that their chances of bumping into their original families are 90 to 95%. As a co-founder and guide for Retedi, Robert knows the value of protecting land that comes from the community. This land is owned by the Samburu. It's purely owned by the community, purely owned by the Samburu people. We think that as a tribe, we've always had that relationship with the elephants. In the Samburu history, we grew up knowing that elephants at one stage were like real brothers in, in the Samburu culture. So for us to have them here, it's like we are trying to help our brothers, as in elephants, to live with us because we've always lived side by side. Keepers at Retedi Elephant Sanctuary have designed an app to monitor and document the day-to-day -day lives of orphans in their care. The formulas we are using for the milk, we note it there. After every day, we increase the formula. 10 grams, if we add 10 grams, we note it in the iPad. It started last year and it is really working with us because we are in a position to know the condition of our elephants since their, their arrival time up to the end until they become big. This is a good sign of an elephant, being happy. This unique use of technology provides keepers with a user-friendly way to record vital information. Okay, I'm gonna do selfie with Kapai. She feel now relaxed because I'm holding her like the mother. Even today, Daphne Sheldrick's pioneering work continues to inspire individual conservationists to innovate and interact with wildlife. Daphne Sheldrick is a big, big figure in, in conservation. She's done a really, really great job. Many of our elephants have been taken from here, taken to, to the Sheldricks, and they've survived. And it's such a wonderful thing to hear that the baby that you rescued from a well is still alive. And it's touching even the people here that giving out that elephant, instead of leaving it into the well to die, rescuing it and giving it to the, to the Sheldricks has done magic. The Sheldricks' latest endeavor is a book highlighting the everyday people who selflessly continue Daphne Sheldrick's conservation work. It is titled, Unsung Heroes. We've never told the stories of regular Kenyans out there who have gone sometimes, more often than not, with absolutely nothing, who have gone to extraordinary lengths of human courage and compassion to save a little baby elephant. So we've been able to sort of showcase those incredible heroes and uh, their stories are positively inspirational. And it is the best of Kenya. 
Dame Daphne Sheldrick fought quietly and constantly throughout her life for wildlife and wild places and for the future of her country. Today, Sheldrick's example motivates countless others to continue that critical fight. If we cannot stand up for what we believe in, if we cannot stand up for what we know that it's possible, um, the next generation, the generations that will come here in future, will, not, will never see ending like an elephant. Sheldrick's have brought it into where we are now, elephants. We want to take it into the next level, as in conservation, as in technology, as in you know bringing more involvement into the communities, and we want to move conservation into the, into the next level. Inside Africa, in association with Zenith Bank.